Hi guys and welcome to another video. Now a video that's going to be very similar to the last few that have gone out about the um, camper van. I've been doing quite a bit of work on it recently all relating around fitting these switches down here to control some additional um, functions on the van or make things a bit easier and a bit more accessible. Um, this is the third one I've done so far. Now I've already done one on an isolator switch for the van which cuts out all our 12 volt feed to the fuse board which allows us to cut every single electrical device off when we are leaving the van. That is wired into the left side of this switch. Um, if I switch that on now you can see we get our kind of lights on. The other switch which I've already done is um, to the right of that is to control our inverter. So we switch that on you should be able to hear that beeping. Um, that there is allowing us to control the inverter without having to go in the cupboard and um, fiddle with any of the wiring. So if you want to see those two videos, I obviously would have linked them up above this. You can go and watch them. Now, the one I'm going to be doing this evening is fitting a special kind of relay which allows us to control our heater. Our heater that gives us um, warm water to either do washing up with or for me to use um, as a shower at the back of the van. We do have a bullfin shower in this van and you can open the tailgate, stand there and have a, a kind of shower your board shorts or something like that. I quite often use it if I go surfing and stuff like that just to get all the, the salt off me before I um, kind of sit in the van and drive back or if we're stopping for some food or something like that. So this is going to be going through um, how you fit one of these fancy relays. Basically, if anyone wants to control a 240 volt source off a 12 volt switch, um, this will apply to a lot of things and it will show you how you do that. Now our heater for our water is a very, very simple system. There are a lot of systems in camper vans that allow you to um, kind of heat water. Most of those, though, are relating around instant heaters, things that run off gas, um, Propex heaters, things like that. There's very little out there in terms of using electric. You can get um, immersion heaters for caravans and stuff like that. They're about 450 watt. They do work, but you're looking at anywhere from about £150 for those systems. We use a very budget system. Um, and I'm going to fit another one of those today so we get two running side by side. Now the system we use is no more than a um, aquarium water heater. It is very budget. I've had one of these um, in the van now for about three years. It just sits in the bottom of the, um, the, the water tank and they are 200 watt each. So it does take about an hour to get the water temperature I think we have a 25 litre tank, it's not a massive tank. It takes about an hour to get the water from about 10 degrees up to about 36, which I think is the maximum temperature of this. That's enough to have warm water for washing up. If you do want a shower and it's not in the summer, um, it's coming into the winter, it's a bit windy and it's a bit cold. That is a bit cold to be honest. So we do just boil um, a kettle um, and we top it up to get it to around about something like 40, 45 degrees, just to make it a bit warmer. Um, now I'm going to fit in this one in additional to the one that's already down there today. So it's going to put our heat output from 200 watts all the way up to, um, to 400 watts. So it's going to allow us to heat that water up in about half the time, about 30 minutes, which isn't too bad, to be honest. Um, because of the power that this thing draws, um, 400 watts will be now but even with 200 watts I tend to have it on when I'm driving to a location so if I'm driving somewhere a bit more remote if I'm wild camping when I'm going to have a shower or if I'm going surfing I'll probably switch it on the way to the beach um, that means that when I'm driving most electric to power it is coming from the split charge relay and not from the actual ledger battery so that's going to be fitted today I'm not really going to go too much into that I mean it's an aquarium water heater it's got a, a 240 mains plug on it. There's nothing really to it. Um, what I'm going to be going through though is fitting this relay. Now, I'm going to have to make a proper enclosure for this relay because it does obviously run at 240 volts and there are bare terminals. So this has got to be isolated so you cannot touch it at all when it's in use. Um, but this is a solid state module it's called. It's made by this company called Fotec. You can find these on Amazon. 
um, but be very careful because there's a few on Amazon that I've found for about four pounds and they, um, the spelling of the Fotec is slightly wrong, rather than a K at the end, it's a H and they do seem quite cheap and a few of the reviews on them do look like they're fake. Um, and I'll talk why that's important any minute. This one actually cost me about £13 off eBay. It's a genuine one. Now the way these work is you have um, a switch here which does anywhere from 24 volts to 380 volts on the top. So you can control your voltage if you're on 110 and you're in America or wherever you are around the world. You should be able to control most mains voltage with this. And the other side you have an input of um, 3 to 32 volts DC. So that's going to be a feed from your battery in your van um, or any other DC supply up to 38 volts or 32 volts, sorry. And the top is for AC. Now these are what they call an optically isolated relay. I'm pretty sure how they work is inside there is a little um, light sensor. So when you put a 12 volt feed to the bottom, it shines a little internal light. There's a sensor on a switch inside for the 240 mains voltage or the 110, whatever you're using. I think that picks up the uh, the light and then switches on that side. So they're actually called an optically isolated um, relay, which means that a light source switches on and off either side. There is no physical connection inside. So you can never end up with 240 volts or 110 volts on your switch. The only voltage you'll ever get through the switch is, is 12 volts. Um, so it means they're safe to use. You can put 12 volts through the switch system, won't have you how you normally would with your fuse board and all stuff like that. Um, and all the dangerous voltage is purely dealt on this side of the switch and doesn't come into the other side. So really good bit of kit. Um, they can handle, I think up to, oh, I can't remember exactly what it is, I'll put it up if it's different. I think it's 40 amps this one can do. The only thing with it is the higher the ampage, you get to a point where you need to start running a heat sink on the back. With the 400 volts I'm going to be running through it, that's only going to be something about 3-4 amps or something like that. So I don't need to run a heat sink on it, it'll be fine how it is. But bear in mind, depending on your load, you might have to have a bit of metal on the back to help it with the heat. So. I'm going to be fitting that. I'm not really going to go too much through the detail of me fitting it, um, but I'm going to put a few pictures up and some video to annotate it, and I'll catch up with you a bit later um, just so we can test it and see how it works. Um, the switches I've got down here, um, I will just talk you through how I've got it. The description for these switches are going to be, or sorry, the link for the switches are going to be in the description. I'm going to put the link for these switches in all the videos I'm doing related to them because they are quite handy switches to be honest and they might come in handy if you want to order them as well if you want to sorry if they'll come in handy me telling you how you wire them up now on the switches you've got five spade connectors you've got two connectors on one side of the switch and three connectors on the other side of the switch now the two connectors that are closest to each other on the side that has three connectors they are the ones that do your switching. So they're the ones that you want to put your live feed going through or whichever way you want to do it. You want to put it on those two terminals. And the ones on the other side, just where there's two terminals, they are all to do with the LED on the switch. So what you want to end up having is you want a, a live feed that is only live when the switch is switched on, go into one of those terminals for the LED, um, the side that only has two terminals on. And the other side of that, you want that going to a neutral in the van so that the kind of current passes through the LED. If you get it wrong and it doesn't work, just swap the wire around um, and it should work being an LED or only work if it's going one way. Um, so yeah, that's the switches anyway. Hopefully that makes sense and hopefully the images you've seen make sense. I'm going to crack on now. I'm not going to go any more rabbit it down about this. Um, I'll get it fitted, put some pictures up. I'll catch up with you a bit later and we'll do some tests and see if it works.
Hi guys, I'm almost finished that installation now. I'm just going to be showing you the, the last bits of the bits I can show you really before I start really tidying the module up down there or the relay up and putting it in the cupboard in the enclosure, which is not really going to be worth you showing you any more after that. Um, you're not really going to be able to sit in the back of the cupboard tucked out of the way very well. Um, but I've got all the wiring done. I'm just quickly going to show you um, it functioning. Um, there is also a light on the relay, that light I was talking about earlier when um, I was saying that you can actually see it, um, kind of the light coming off inside of it, which controls it, the the um, I, optically isolated relay side of it. So there's no actual connection between the, the 240 mains and the 12 volt. Um, it's got a cool little indicator on it or a clear bit at the top where you can actually look down and see that light in operation. Um, now I'll quickly just spin you around and show you how it's wired up. Right, now it's not properly fitted yet, obviously. It's just kind of sat here in the cupboard um, into actually go and install it properly um, and put an enclosure on it. But as you can see, we've got this, um, the 12 volt side here. Or well, I say 12 volt, it's obviously labeled um, 3 to 33 volts DC. Um, now on this, all I've got is I've got a, a feed which comes from the switch up here. So basically what that is on the back of the switch now, I actually have a 12 volt feed from the battery and that goes into the switch, out of the switch, down on this brown cable. Um, unfortunately, I have to have had to use um, uh, some house wiring for this one, but it's all safe. It's um, 1.5 mil, it's plenty thick enough and this is only the signal side anyway, so it's very low current. Um, this comes in joins into here um, and then on the outside of it there is a blue cable that goes to um, an earth point for the battery uh, it goes to like a buzz bar as such so the voltage comes down this switch into the system switches it on we get the light come on which you can see for this viewing panel and then that activates the 240 volt system so on this side we've got um, uh, our two lives that go off to um, the water heaters which are in this um, this uh, water container here um, and on the other side we've got the feed that comes from the actual um, ice uh, inverter which goes through a 13 amp plug just above it or just to the left here which you can't see um, and that's pretty much it at the moment I've got the neutrals crimped into this uh, bullet connector behind here but when this goes in the proper enclosure these will probably go, be going into proper electrical connectors um, I just want to show it working now so I'm going to leave it lying like that um, now if I come up I've already got the isolator switch on so I'll just so that and switch that on this one is for the inverter so I'm going to have to power that on first and then this one here now will switch that um, that relay on um, and give us the power. So you should just be able to see down there, you can see the light coming on it. Um, and that is bypassing, um, or sorry, activating the relay and putting the power into um, my budget water heaters. If I switch it on now, you should be able to see the lights coming on them. So that is as simple as it is. Yeah, so if you want to go and do that, I mean, I'll put the links up in the description for that isolator, or sorry, for, sorry, for that relay. Obviously, it's going to be handy for many operations, whether you want to be utilising, I don't know, 240 volt uh, fans or lights um, or heating elements. The problem with 12 volt heating elements, like I was saying earlier, is you can't seem to find the same quality in 12 volt heating elements that you can in uh, the mains, immersion heaters and stuff like that. There's a few systems that which are made to run off 12 volts for caravans, mainly 450 watts and stuff like that, but they are expensive. You're paying anywhere from 150 to 200 pounds or just the inverter, sorry, just the heating element. Uh, so it's a lot of money. My system is quite budget. It does use aquarium heaters, which have the limit because they only really get to 36 degrees. But throughout the summer, that is plenty fine for us. Um, if it's a bit cold, we do just boil a kettle on our Smev 9222 and just top it up. And that kind of brings it up to the right temperature anyway. So it's not the end of the world. Um, but yeah, really happy how it's uh, gone. Happy how it's um, function. it's fitted in there. I'm going to um, put you down now, continue fitting the rest of the system. I'm not going to bother putting any more video clips up from it. This is just a basic video of um, something if you want to do the same. Um, if you want to use this relay to uh, fit onto your own stuff, if you want to do this kind of heater route as well, it's always a bit handy for that. 
Thanks for watching. Um, on the next one, I'm going to be fitting, or on the next one to do with the vans, I'm going to be fitting a changeover relay, which will divert the power from my invert, sorry, from my solar panel from the ledger battery behind the seat to the main driver battery just to keep it topped up. So um, I'll be doing that on the next one to do with the van. Uh, I'll catch up with you then, and thanks for watching.